from the Thai Cats Audio Network. This is Morialli and Hitch. All right. Welcome, everybody. Another edition of the Morialli and Hitch podcast. I'm Mike Morialli. There's Rob Hitchcock. David Butko is doing what David Butko does. This is a long day for Butko Nothing. today. Nothing. Yeah. So it's four o'clock in the afternoon. This is a very rare, I'd say, twilight uh, you know, episode of the Maury Lane Hitch podcast. Butko is clearly, clearly ready to go to bed already. Already yeah. complaining it's been a long day. It's four o'clock. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's worn out. Yeah. Well, I'm just glad I don't have to pre on coffee before our morning. Well, what the... It's usually, what, 9 a.m. a.m. that we jump Maybe on. you cool. just woke up. Maybe you just woke up Maybe. an hour ago. That could have be too. Look how happy Butko looks. I think he likes yeah. the afternoons way better than the mornings. He yeah. likes them way better. Oh, yeah. So listen. Hey, you, what? Hold on. I got something first. I got something you first. You go. Do you have like a little trampoline in the basement where you can jump on it and then go right into the wall and have put a Velcro on there? <laughs> <laughs> that would be the These best. These are Rob's dad's jokes. Yeah, Rob's you dad should. Jokes. You should. A little oh. trampoline, a little round trampoline. Just boot right onto the wall and just stick there. That was Here's funny. thinking. Remember Super Dave Osborne? Yes. Super oh. Dave Osborne. You'd yeah. have no idea. Just go on YouTube, Butko. Super Dave Osborne. Here's another thing for you. By the way, I have to give kudos because last week I said, Butko, you need to put the video in here. You need to put the picture that he did it all. Have you seen it, Rob? No, I haven't seen Your it. Your stupid face is all over the Ticat social media. Are you kidding? Now, you did oh, that? Oh, yes. I didn't do it. You he did, did it? it? Okay. And they picked it up. It was magnificent. What, what, what face? <laughs> that one. Oh, yes, you're dead. Butko, cr- you're fine. <laughs> you're getting I'm fine. Brilliant. I saved brilliant. I, I didn't draw on it. Don't worry. He oh. only put no, this is to Butko's credit, he own or his defense, he only put it on our podcast. Oh, but what happened it. was uh, the Thai Cats social media picked it up and used it as the promo for the podcast. So it went out to like fifty, sixty, hundred thousand people. Okay. So there you go. Well you know Nick, what, Butko? Well done, That's fine. Butko. When I see you next time you're gonna get it. <laughs> well done, Butko. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's good. Are we is our guest here already? No. Is he in Hawaii? So, Butko just told us, and we'll get to that. Well, you just gave it away, uh-huh. but that's okay. I mean, what does it matter? Is he there? But Butko, oh, he's here. But he's, he's here, like waiting for us. He's in the. He just got in the lobby. Oh, oh boy. Well, why even wait any longer? Is he? Is he ready to go? He's, he's got. He's logged in. Whatever. Well, he can't that's... hear us now. Uh, I don't know. Probably not. I've Probably not. Butko, been. you can't. Just get him Let's in. Let's let him the in. guest in. Oh, look at Uh-oh. this guy. Wow. <laughs> Looking good, coach. What's up? Looking good. Oh, look at you, eh? Where where, hey, it's, where it's, do we good, find you today? Is good. <laughs> How you doing, Hitch? I'm good, buddy. You? Can't complain, man. Are you in Hawaii right now? Yeah, I'm sitting on my lanai right now. This is crazy. This is hey, we're taking this podcast worldwide. I can't hear you, you very well though. Just to get it there, yeah, that's better. Is that better? That's probably better. Yeah, yeah. All right. We'll let our uh, Butko, who is our you know man behind the scenes that deals all this IT, he'll chime in if if we need anything special. How long but, you guys been doing this? T- too long. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is our 49th episode. Yes. We just found out. Yeah. So one away. We wanted from you 50. for the fiftieth, but well, uh, we'll figure that out. Maybe we'll get you on next week. All right. We'll see how it goes. But, uh, Coach, we uh, we are really excited to have you on. So I don't know how you've much done you've done. 50. We haven't yeah. done 50 yet. 50's That's awesome. next week. That's awesome. 50's yeah. next week. But we That'll be it. <laughs> and that's <Yeah>. it. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, no, Absolutely bad. done. So we are uh, we're excited to have you, you know, on. I do because... one of these things, too. And you know the hardest part is just continue. you almost got to have somebody full-time keeping the – keeping guests coming right this is true because you try you're trying to do other things and yeah well meetsy meetsy and i did this show probably 30 30 times without or 25 times without a guest just the two of us bullshitting about when we used to play what we used to do (laughs) the fun stuff the road and and just just talking because we talk each other once a week and and people like well you should put some structure into it why we've as soon as we put structure into it the show's done screw it up yeah (laughs) 
<laughs> no, so this this show. You know what? I'll bet that was probably the best episode, so too, when you guys started talking about all that stuff. Oh. Yeah. Well, you know what? We it was uh, we Those, had to catch you know ourselves the fans, a few they times. Just eat yeah. that shit up because it's, a, it's kind of a peek behind the curtain. Exactly. Little, uh, small. Peek. Can you hear me, Coach? Yeah. When I yeah, speak, only a little bit. <laughs> can you yeah. hear can me, you, Can you hear me at nope. all when I speak? You can't hear me. Okay. Uh, coach, <laughs> just give so, me a second. So you can't hear Mike. Nah. Uh, Mike's, Mike's, Mike's been talking the whole talking time. The whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Does he really? Oh, uh, I love it. This is the best. Now, can you see us and hear us? Uh, you guys are all good now. Oh, oh there we go. All they wanted to talk to was me anyway. He didn't want to talk Get to you. Get out of here. <laughs> For, listen, I was talking the whole time. I'm like, why is Coach cutting me off every time I'm saying something? Because you kept talking to Hitch, and I'm going, what the hell's going on? This is bullshit. <laughs> but, but listen, I'm so excited you're here. You know, you'll, you'll, get a, you'll get a handle on things pretty quick, Coach. I'm the guy that talks a lot, keeps the show going, okay? Rob is here to, to – yeah. used to be for looking good. Now it's just for a couple stories here and there. That's the way it goes, eh? You know that's a lie. <laughs> Absolutely a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> so we're excited to have you on because we've only had one other current coach on. That was Coach O a couple weeks ago. He was great. You know, we've we've had a lot of ex-players, and we've done our stories over and over again. And uh, you know, it's it's been a, a good time having those uh, recollections. But my first experience with you goes back to 1997, I think, when you are named head coach of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and I think we played you early in the year. And we, you know, prior to this, we have, we had seen you, and you were this gregarious, you know, earring wearing, Harley driving. Uh, son of a gun, let's put it that way, that just rode into town, made a yeah. hell of a lot of noise, and had a hell of a lot of fun. How the hell did that happen? Some, some shit just never changes, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Good. 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 How did that all happen? Like, people ask me stuff like that all the time. Like, Mao Tse Tung had a five-year plan. I didn't know five minutes from what I was doing. I mean, it just didn't work. <laughs> It was not by, it was never by design. It was just by, you know, I fell in love with the CFL when I was actually in college uh, because oh, I, went, really? I went to the University of Maine and we could yeah. get uh, CTV, right? So, right. I, you know, I, I can remember Rudy DiPietro and, you know, that, that era of players. And I, right. I just thought the game was so much better than our game, right? It was so yep. wide open. It was so... You know, just everything that makes our game. Wait, make just better. a second, Coach. This is a serious. Co- He's laughing because you called Rocky Di Pietro Rudy Di Pietro, and that's how much of a child he is. He's such a child he couldn't be professional for more than ten I seconds. I couldn't. I couldn't. He couldn't. What he is? Rocky is Rudy. <laughs> he could, he could be Rudy. It's perfect because I'm going to do that about seven or eight more times. <laughs> <laughs> This we is the best. We got players. Oh we got players. I usually do that. We got, usually players, do that. we got players that don't think I know their name, and I probably don't, so I just call them 843. We got one. We, Carthel. Oh, <laughs> what's that? Uh, so, no, no. So we got Carthel Flowers Lloyd. He, all he does is lead the league in special teams tackles. I think he's met more than anybody in the history of the Ticats. And I can never remember his name, so I just call him two names. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, whatever works. Doesn't matter. But, but think about it. You go back and you're and we're going to – listen, there is no structure to what the hell we're going to do today. Number right. one, you're in Hawaii. God bless yeah. you. It looks yeah. amazing. And I'm yeah. glad you're taking some time to, to chill out there. Yeah. Um, but you would have coached – well, you've coached a long time. How many players do you think you've cumulatively coached <laughs> in your career? It's got to be thousands. Like, how can you expect to remember a name some of those days? Like, come on. Well, especially one from that far long ago, but you know, I'm, I, it, it's amazing. You know that one of the things that has kept me in the business, I think, as long as I have, is the fact that I've been around so many great players. I mean, just great not not just great players, because you know, you guys know this that everybody's got talent in pro football. There's no mm-hmm. bad players in the pros. There's certain levels of greatness, and you know, but I'm talking about great people. You know, the, yeah. and the game is about people. The game is it comes down to people all the time. And and having the opportunity to be around so many guys that are just I mean, 
great dudes. Like, I, I mean, we, I never coached you. I never coached Hitch, but I had so much respect for you guys. Likewise. Because yeah. Yeah. you played the game the right way. You know, and I, when I see Andrew Grigg, I still laugh. I, I still laugh with him because I tried to sign him as a free agent. I told him I made, <laughs> I made him the most money he ever got in the CFL because I just kept trying to up the ante and the tight cats kept matching. So, but you know, it's, it's those interactions. It's those things that make it, make the game what it is, you know, and, and, uh, both of you guys, and you know, I'm not saying this just because it's you guys. I'm, I'm just telling you, both of you guys were exactly what this game should be. You know, well, thank you. Talented, Man. tough guys that competed every down, and you know, uh, and, and we had some fun too. Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I, I think well, that's on fun. and off the field. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. And I think that fun is harder to come by now, right? Like, I just think, you know, in, and from a distance. So I don't want to be that old guy that said, oh, back when I played. But I just, you know, I, I, it's different now, right? It's back in those days, it was like, I don't know, we, we grounded out a bit, right? Well, we grounded out a bit. Well, I think one Perfect. part of that was when you think back on those that era of players, and I came in when Quick Parker was just – you know, had a few oh, yeah. years left, and Jim Jim Mills was still I was as BC, and Jim Mills was still one of the best right tackles in the business, and Ian Sinclair and Gerald Roper and yeah. all those guy, kind of guys, and those guys were all guys that loved the game. I mean, truly, right. truly loved yeah. the game, and it wasn't about it was in the age before social media, and it was in the age before guys pushing their brand, and it was the you know in an age where it was I won't say more innocent because I I don't think it was more innocent, but it was just more down to earth and you know those guys played every game and you know in you know everybody that's been through this history of the cfl like we have and during our time you know i remember coming in when it was really really good and then being at you know being at its lowest ebb when we didn't mm -hmm. know we we're going to play the next week you know yeah I've had four franchises fold on me during the season i mean yeah. an airplane stop on the tarmac in Ottawa on its way back to Vegas because they didn't pay the bill. <laughs> so they Crazy. The plane yeah. You know, just all those things. But in spite of all of that, you know, the camaraderie, the closeness amongst the guys competed fiercely, but mm -hmm. it was a small league and everybody knew everybody. And if you were an asshole, you know, it was, you yeah. couldn't hide it very long. No, no, no. I, I, I agree. I mean, to me, it's, Back in those days, because we all went through it, you, you as a coach, us as a player, like I would have done anything to save the CFL. Oh. Anything. Yeah, I was like totally unselfish when it came to that. Like that, all that mattered was I, I really believed and loved the game. I believed and loved the team I was on and the, and the league I played in and the players. And uh, I, I just just loved it. Like I yeah. just loved it. I know Rob felt the same. I know you felt the same way. Yeah. We all bought in, right? Yeah, we absolutely. all bought in. You know, I can I remember back in, in the day, Saskatchewan having, you know, they were selling wheat to try and save the Rough Riders. Now you go over to Saskatchewan, remember that cement block that we played, oh my God. We played on at Taylor Field, and you go over now and see this thing that they're that they're playing. Unbelievable. It, it is incredible. Same thing for you guys, you know. Um, yeah. Like when I first came in the league, we first time we came to Hamilton, Joe Papa said to me, he said, uh, you know, wear a hat. I said, "What? We're coming out. We're coming out of that that little locker room at the end of the stadium." He goes, Awful. "Wear." He goes, "Wear a hat." And I said, well, "What are you talking about, Joe? I never wear a hat." And he goes, "Wear a hat." And and I understood why when we came underneath that that like it was a, almost a cage. It reminded me of this the scene from the Blues Brothers where they're in that country bar and the guy's like, oh, yeah. here. <laughs> that was, that was yeah. what it was like to come into Ivor Wynn. and then the players complaining about the fact that they had painted that tie cat so many times in the middle oh, of the field. Oh, I got it. still got it here. It was horrible. Got it here. You guys have probably got scars from there to there. Because oh, lead paint. Yeah. Lead, lead paint, paint, too. My best yeah, one, though, at, at Ivor Wynn was 2012. We come in with Montreal. I'm in Montreal. And, you know, Coach Trestman had this thing that, you know, basically you had to stand watch in the locker room before the game. Like, you had to have, a, you had to, like, a – each coach was responsible responsible for so many minutes. And well, the minutes I was in, all of a sudden there's this commotion in the locker room, and the coach's locker room wasn't attached to the, but it was. So yeah. I, I go out and I think these freaking assholes are fighting before the game, right? We're supposed to play, but I go out and like I I see six of our guys on their stools, right, like up on their stools, 
and a rat is running around. <laughs> Yeah, running around in the locker room. And that's not even planted because we had those in our locker room too. Believe yeah, me. We did. Oh, yeah. my God. But, uh, I, I, you go in and then going into the urinal and you'd see, it, uh, you know, those hockey pucks of soap or whatever that stuff. Uh, yeah, hair them. all over them. It, it, <laughs> it, it's a Argos suck on everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Coach, I, I think uh, when we had Coach O on um, about a week or so ago, he hit the nail on the head. He said, do you remember when the 99 team came in uh, for my induction a couple of years ago in 2019 and the 99 team came in and it was great. And he said, I'll never, he, he said, uh, Mike Campbell gave an opportunity to speak. And he said, and just going back on what Mike said about kind of, you know, we don't want to say how we're older players and this is what we did, but he hit the nail on the head. Coach O said, I let him talk. And he said, you know what you guys did? He says, we used to drink beer after a game. You guys drink milkshakes after a game and protein shakes. And protein you shakes guys get on massage. bikes. You yeah. guys get on bikes and ride the bike after <laughs> we go to the bar after. <laughs> and I think it's, I think it was just, I don't know. I mean, we worked our tails off, but we also, as you know, we, we, you have to have fun when you're doing it, right? So it is, the game has changed. It, it, not game, so I think the business, is, everything the business has changed. Around the business, the business yeah. has changed. You know, yeah, it's and it's business. become more of a business, right? It's become it more should. of a business. And we were, we played seasonal, like we trained on our own the off season. It's not like that much anymore. There's a lot of the more demands on the players and it's more of a business and they have to approach it that way. Yep. And I totally get it. Oh, and I love uh, it. It, it's, it's the evolution of, of, where everything is going but when i look at your journey because yeah. you had still on this amazing journey not like i you know not only were you a head coach you know a coordinator you're a broadcaster out in the uk you've you've coached in the world league you've coached in the spring league you've coached in the cfl uh, vegas posse <laughs> i mean yeah like like you've seen a lot you yeah. and back to your point like you what keeps bringing you back to the CFL A, but all but specifically the Tie Cats because it's been a couple couple runs here, and yeah. you keep coming back for more. Well, I think there's a couple of reasons. Number one, it's the game. You know, the game, particularly f for the job I have, right? I, I don't know if I could be a special teams coordinator in the NFL because it's like, what do you do, right? Yeah, you, what do you scheme? Tell the guy hit it, the game, up, <laughs> it and hit it. You no, know, now you go fair catch it, and we'll walk, we'll jog off and on the field. I mean. All the things that you can do in the, in the special teams area in our game make it such a dynamic and fun thing to be a part of. And then right. to work in an organization where they continuously brought us impact guys. You know, you, you think about Lindsey Lamar, only, two, only twice in the history of the Canadian Football League as a guy who touched the ball for the first time in his career, run a, run a kickoff back for a touchdown. And that's... Fig Pen and Lindsey Lamar. Mm -hmm. So it's only happened in Hamilton. And, Crazy. you know, I, we've had, I, at last count, 11 different guys score special teams touchdowns just in the years that I've been at the, at the program. So I'm, I work for an organization that knows what, you know, you have to have to have success in yeah. this league, and they bring that to you. And then, ultimately, it's the relationships you have with people, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and... I told I, I tell this story and it's absolutely true. My first year in the league, I came. It was like I went to the went to the Senior Bowl at the end, which is like the pro coaches convention. I ran into a couple of friends of mine, and they said, "How you like it up there?" I said, "Oh man, I love it up there. The game, game's great. I'm living in Vancouver." Da 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 da. And and we, our conversation, you know, went a little further. I said, "But there's two places I will never ever coach in that league. I'll never live in these places." And, I, and they said, where's that? And I said, Regina, Saskatchewan, and Hamilton, Ontario. And <laughs> lo and behold, it, it's been the place I've spent more years at than any yeah, other. Crazy. You know, but what you find out about the hammer when you get in, because, you know, when you, when, especially back in those days, you know, you'd fly to Toronto, you'd take the bus down. It seemed like it was always July or August yeah. when we came in. It was hot. It stunk. It was the nasty stadium. It was like the yep. fans were climbing over the. I like, I, yep. I'm hiding in the dugout most of the game because the people are throwing shit at you on the <laughs> line. And we could, it seemed like we could never win there, right? And, uh, but then when you come here and you and you realize what that team means to this city, and mm. how that 
generational fandom, which you didn't have in Vancouver. You had it in Winnipeg, right. but you didn't have it in Vancouver, certainly. And really, Edmonton had kind of lost it. By the time I'd gotten to Edmonton, they kind of lost that a little bit. But still to this day, you know, you watch the dads bring their six-year-old son, right? And the kid's got a – he doesn't have a Buffalo Bills hat on. He's got a tie cats on, yep. hat on. Yeah. And he wants to be, you know, the, the dads that, you know, wanted to be Mike Mariali and, and Hitchcock, Rob Hitchcock, you know, are now bringing their sons who want to be Simone Lawrence and, you know, Tim White. Yeah. And I think that yep. is, that's awesome. And, yeah. you know – Couple upgrades too, by the way. A couple <laughs> upgrades to those guys. So for those guys, right? For them, you know, time moves on. You know, guys. <laughs> but that's uh, it's funny you you look at Hamilton that way because I've never really looked at it that way in terms of generational fans. I've always looked at okay, why why does it not work here? Why does it not work there? Why does it work in those markets? And I think that's that's a lot. And I've been around the game. I've been around the CFL forever, right? As a five year old kid on, and I never looked at it in that way. Although. My history with the cats is totally generational. It started with my grandfather yep. and my father and whatever. So, and it still goes to this day, yeah. which um, which is very interesting and, what, and something that Hamilton has really held on to. And and um, the fact that you notice that is is uh, is interesting as well because it's beyond yeah. just the relationship you have in the coaches and and Steiny and all those. It it actually is the whole thing, right? Yeah, and you know what? The other thing I think that our our organization has done better than anybody else in the last since bob took over is we celebrate our history right mm -hmm. and now other yeah. people are starting to figure that out a little bit but you know when i was in winnipeg or i was in edmonton or vancouver all those places have great histories but our history is not only on the walls it's walking right the streets it's walking the field on game day you know this thing that they're doing now where they bring back a alumni of distinction mm -hmm. i mean yeah. that's a f i think that's fabulous absolutely yeah, fabulous. Yeah, that's you, great when you're down there on the field and i always go over and say thank you to whoever it is that's like joe Jawan last week last week you know yeah. thank you for what you gave you see how much that touches those guys not what i said but what the what they get yeah, out right. of being in that stadium and seeing those those fans that you know loved them when they were players still love them when they're a, you know, grown men that no longer play the game. Yeah, I was just gonna say when I was in high school again, my parents had season tickets in section twenty eight at Iverwind Stadium, and I played all my high school games there. And of course, my my favorite player was Rudy DiPietro, but um... <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite not too. To be, not not to be mistaken by his identical brother Rocky DiPietro. Exactly. Yes, yes, Rudy was my my favorite though. But uh, no, just just going on that, like uh, you know, the opportunity. Like Mike's from, I say he's from Hamilton. He's from Stony Creek, so he's not really. Holy from shit, we're gonna get to the Hamilton Stony right. Creek uh, battle. Yeah, he's I think the, you're he's from on Bimbrook, the other side of. You? He's yeah. in the other. You know what, Ben Brook and I yeah. born and raised in the East End. You know that. Um, but just growing up and and watching the stadium. Um, you know, compared to what it is now, and I and I love the fact that it's family oriented. And the last fifteen years since Bob's taken it over, it's been absolutely amazing. Uh, but back when we played, and the Argos used to come down for Labor Day. There would be seventeen fights outside the stadium. There's not that anymore, which I, I think is great, right? It's great for the game. Um, you know, people respect it. But when I was a kid, there was my dad would pull oh, me out of there because there's brawls, scraps all over. They didn't want to take us to games. <laughs> Hey, okay, the scraps, I, but... I, I got Hitch. I got to ask you a question. This, this, you went to Weber, right? Yeah. Okay. You Mon first Montana of all, and first of all, how did you get there, and when yeah, were you? No there? shit. How did he get there? That's what I want. To Pure know. talent. <laughs> Pure talent. <laughs> No, no, you, you don't get to uh, you don't get to Ogden, Utah on pure talent, bro. That's you know how we, uh, this is a funny story that connects us, uh, Jeff. Yeah, that does. The guy that ended up recruiting me to McMaster and was my coach also recruited players at the same time to Weber. So while he was recruiting me to Mac because I had the grades to go to Mac, he was recruiting Hitch and Trevor Shaw and a bunch of guys to Weber. Oh, he was working bad. both angles. Well, he was uh, the head coach, Steve Bruno. Steve Bruno. Is Al, yes. Was that Al's son? No, not no. related to Al. Not no, really. No. I had Al coach me after, but this was a different Steve Bruno. It started out east at Mount A, 
yeah. then somehow had an affiliation with Weber. He went, and that's how he went Rob, there. He went to Weber. There you he go. He went to Weber State. So, of course, I couldn't get into Mac, Coach. I couldn't get into Mac because my grades were like 70, right? So I couldn't get in. But, <laughs> 70. Uh, they were. Get out of here. I'll show you the grades. Anyways, <laughs> we... Uh, yeah, so Trevor Shaw went. He went to my high. Or I went. To, I went to his high school. Trevor Shaw went before I did, and then Obi Spanik and I uh, were going down at the same time. And Steve Bruno said, "Hey, send some tapes down." So we sent some tapes down. Uh, Dave Arslanian uh, ended up coming down to on a. He, we went to on a recruiting trip first, and then they ended up coming down and trying to sign me. And you know, it was, uh, it was crazy because I was being looked at by you know a lot of the, most every school in Canada like Mike was, but. You know, my dad's like, if you're getting an education paid for, you're gone. See you later. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm not paying for it. So yeah, I left and played. Uh, yeah, what, I just played what, my, year, what years were you at Weber? So 91 and to 94 was my senior year. Wow. Yeah. And drafted in 95 to, to the Cats in 95. So. Wow. 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 So you played for Sark's son, David. Uh, he was gone. Uh, Dave Arslanian came in when I came in in 1991, and uh, his brother Dave Arslanian was a defense coordinator. Yep. So there's sorry, there was Dave and uh, oh my God, what's his brother's name? Dave. Uh, both brothers anyway were the were the coach. So. Yep. The, their their father was a legendary guy, Sark Arslanian. Sark, sorry, Sark. Yes, yes. legendary. He oh was, yes. He was the head coach at at uh, Colorado State and Wyoming Colorado State, huge rivalry. So one time, yeah. this is one of the things one of the greatest things I have ever seen a head coach do. He brought the entire team in to the stadium on tanks. What? He, he Where got, do you get tanks? got a hold of the R ROTC department and so oh they oh got a hold God. of some, like some fort that's right there in Fort Collins, I guess, and yeah. drove the team into the stadium against, against their arch rival on tanks. Oh. I, I mean, that's, that's amazing. That, that's an yeah, all-timer, that awesome. I think. That's amazing. But you coached, you coached at what? Montana, I think, in Western Montana or Montana. At, I, I my you... first coaching job was in my first full time coaching job was at the University of Montana in 1983, and I was there 83, 45, and then left and went to uh, Pennsylvania six, seven, eight. Back. Is that still a big sky? Yeah. Conference? Was yeah. It? Okay, it was. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. good league. That was, cool. that was a good league. Yeah, that was fun. That was so, so fun. Jeff, what's the tide of Hawaii? Can you give us the the tie um, and how you ended up there? And what are you like? What are you doing this week when you're off there? Okay, all so, kind so, of all those all questions. Right, first of all, this this uh, this podcast is going to be like self annihilation, self character annihilation, right here. Because you're gonna now you're really going to think I'm a black job. This right. is good. I this up, is what we want. I grew up a kid of a son of a professional baseball coach. So we guys we we traveled everywhere when. When I was, especially when I was small, we lived everywhere from Bay City, Michigan, Coos Bay, Oregon, Tampa, Florida. Bray, I mean, we were everywhere. And I never really felt at home any place. Right. right. And it just so happened I went to Hawaii for the first time in the 80s to for football. And I remember getting off the airplane and it just this incredible feeling came over me. It's like, this is it. This is where you belong. This is where you, this is where you need to stay. And so I always came back and I always would in the off season would spend time here. And then, you know, through a connection uh, that I met when I was coaching at the university of Hawaii in 2005, six, seven, uh, this guy was a basketball coach at the university of Hawaii Hilo. He turned into a real estate agent and he said, Hey, you always talked about buying a home here. Well, why don't you buy a place in on the big no way. And I said, yeah, well, I always wanted to be 6'2", and that never happened either. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't have much hope. But, you know, like this economy over here is like there's two. There's the real economy, then there's the, you know, the local economy. and The local economy. Yeah, yeah we were able to get this place, and it's a beautiful, beautiful home. I'm 87 steps from the ocean. No um, way. Yeah. And, oh, uh, nice. And here, my wife and I sit on the lanai where I'm sitting right now. You hear the ocean at night, and so – Everything's really centered around the water. You know, I love to surf. I love to mm -hmm. be in the water. I love to snorkel and fish and do all that. And so, so, yeah. as, so does my wife. So we're actually very, very active in, you know, the local community. She's a special education teacher here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, she's uniquely prepared to be married to me. 
No, it's, it's, yeah. You took the words out of my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> so what? So I'm assuming your the way you grew up and the fact that you bounced around and did that that made it easier for you to find a home that that you wanted to. Because I look at okay, take Rob and myself. I would love to be in Hawaii right now, but I got my family here and I've got all these connections here, and it almost feels like I don't want to read between the lines. But do you think that? The way yeah, I, you moved around, let I, you do that? I think so, because I never had a connection to anything. And really, right. like, you know, my I was very close to my mom because my dad was always gone and always working. And, you know, when, when you play, you know, we're, we're not home very much when we play 18 games. Well, shit, they play 162. Yeah. So you yeah. don't see them other than in the off season, maybe. And so um, I've always been kind of just... I don't know. I went to I went to the University of Maine because I like their helmets. I mean, I haven't made I haven't made decisions in my life that are really based on a lot of thought. And I can I know that people are shaking their heads and going. No, but that's, that's great that, to that's, be able to make just make decisions. Well, I just I right. was just like I was so I was a kid that loved the University of Maine, right? So I mean, the University of Michigan. So they had those winged those beautiful winged helmets, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. I remember I got a piece of recruiting literature from. Jerry DiNardo, who had been a high school, been a All American guard at Notre Dame, at my high school in South Bend, Indiana, and then uh, went to started a coaching career at Maine, and and he sent me this stuff, and there's this, you know, these guys got this beautiful helmet. It's the University of something, so it sounds big time to me. So I said, I'm going, and that's so, how you did it. And then yeah, and then the, I show up, and uh, I go, you know, how you're in your locker the first day and you can't wait to see your, you know, there's my shoes and my glove and yeah. gloves and all that. And I open the locker and I look, I said, it's just a blue helmet. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I went down to the equipment, man, this old, this old down East guy, Woody, <laughs> Woody. And I said, Hey, Woody, wh- when do we put the, when do we put the, like the thing on the, the deckles on the helmet? And he goes, yeah, dumb bastard. We, we changed that helmet this off season. <laughs> <laughs> so you made a decision because you like the helmet that no longer was in use. No, I, you I, got should there. Have, I should have taken it and, and transferred right then. <laughs> but I uh, love it. It's part of the journey. Yeah, yep. part of the journey. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. well, yeah, always... When young coaches ask me stuff, you know, like, oh, how do I get into the business or how do I, you know, I say, hey, listen, man, whatever I say, do exactly the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, oh. that's, what, that's what Mike does. So I do whatever Rob is supposed to do. I do the exact opposite. Exact opposite. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Coach, we do a we do a little segment every week. We usually talk about it before our guests on, but um, we usually talk a little bit about the cats, of course, and, yep. and their journey and what's going on. Last week was tough. Uh, it was great. I mean, right now, it's great to see Bo out there again. I I, I love it. Uh, Schultz is looking off the charts good right now as well. Like those that that tandem right now. I mean, what a what a heartbreaker at the end. But um, you know what? You, you, you know you know what you got to do now. You got to go into Montreal. You got those guys next week in Montreal, and then you've got them the week after again in Montreal. So um, you know, I, I, very beatable, of course. Mm-hmm. You, you know that we know that. I think you guys are clicking. Mike and I talk about it every week. I I feel that finally the pieces are together. The special teams um, are awesome. McAllister, McAllister, I think thirty yep. five. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, man, that, that guy, he's dynamic when he gets the ball. Love, love watching him. And even I love watching him on the offensive side of the ball when he gets in there and catches the ball and takes off. But I think when, when a few of those uh, special teams and O are clicking, D might not. I mean, I haven't seen this year all phases kick in yet, and that's real tough. But I think that with Bo back and, and the positive, the positive that you guys are doing um, in the room as coaches. I think it's unbelievable that you're in a position right now. And I have a great feeling, not just because we're talking, we're from Hamilton, we played all our, I have, I think you guys are going to go and beat Montreal and then have to go to Toronto and play those. I don't want to say it, but you know what I mean? You know what I want to say, but I have a, I have a great feeling. What's your take on, on the team right now? Well, I think, I think you guys haven't played the game as long as you did and seen it from the inside out. You recognize that in our game, particularly, it's it's true in the NFL, but it's more true in the Canadian Football League that you want to get to the playoffs hot and healthy. And really, we we've, we've played our best football in the last four weeks, and you know had a, had an opportunity. To, you know, BC's fighting their ass off to to win the West, and you know yeah. we take them, we beat them once, and take them, you know, to where they got to kick a field goal, one second left on the clock to beat us. I mean, you know. 
that's all you can hope to do is be in a position to win the game in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I think those things are going to help us. We are, as you as you said, Hitch, we are getting components of our team back that have been hurt for most of the year. You know, Dylan Wynn yeah. is now back, and that's a huge. I mean, he's like yeah. he's like the Energizer Bunny on on our football. <laughs> you know, he oh, is, yeah. he brings nonstop energy. Bo coming back. Um, you know, I think that Scott Milanovic has done a great job with the offense. You know, since since he's been with us, um, you know, Jordan Murray has helped solidify the tackle position. You know, obviously we, we're going to miss Fig, but, you know, I just think all all of our phases are starting to play better. And, you know, complementary football, that word that coaches use all the time, is what really yeah. wins for you in the playoffs. Because, you know, we've been to the Great Cup four times, and in every single one of those situations, you know, we actually played – we weren't – we weren't – tremendous in any one phase it was all three phases playing together and that's one yeah. of the things that you know O talks about all the time and harps on with the players and you know ed- educates the players all the time about the importance of playing complementary football where you know in today's game it's more important than it's ever been you know because the way the rules you know it's funny now you just take this rule <clears throat> you kick a field goal they have the right which they've always had to take the ball at, at or or ask you to kick it off. Well, now they give them the ball at the forty. Well, you're almost at midfield when you get the yeah. ball. So two first downs, you're down in scoring. So it's you really got to play complementary football to manage the fl- ebb and flow of a game. And now you factor mm-hmm. in what happens in you know November in Canada with the wind and the weather and all those other things. The team that does that, that manages the clock, plays complementary football. There's typically the teams that are going to go to the Great Cup. Right. Yeah. So, so before we got to get going here in a few minutes, Coach, and I know you got to enjoy the beautiful sunshine, a little bit of surf, and the rest of that stuff. Um, you, similar to Rob's kind of comment about you know facing Montreal and then facing them getting in the playoffs. How do you approach the game? Is there a game within the game now leading up to this game that theoretically means nothing? Like I, you know, watching you historically and watching others, there's always something up your sleeve. Yeah, well, I've never, never, never believed a game meant nothing, right? Right. Because if if it meant nothing, they wouldn't keep score and nobody would show up. So obviously it means something. And I think for us, you know, to go on the road and play well is important. That's important in the growth and development of this football yeah. team. And then to have the confidence then to go back again, you know, seven days later and do it again. One of the unique things about the Canadian Football League, where you may play somebody at the end of the season and have to come back and play them right again in the playoffs. That typically doesn't happen. It happens every once in a while in the NFL, but because of the amount of teams they have, it's rare. Um, mm-hmm. I just really believe that you got to stay healthy. That's obviously important. But your confidence and your ability to this ours is a different game. It's a you know, and I say this not in any kind of a, you know sexist statement. I mean, it's a man's game. It is a man's game. And anytime you impose your will on another man, mm-hmm. and that's what this game ultimately comes down to: one-on-one matchups and your ability to impose your will as a team and as an individual player. That's not lost on that other guy. Right. right, and so you—that's another one of the reasons why you want to go over and play well. You know, quote what some people will say is a meaningless game. Yeah, but you never want to give someone else the even the thought that they could t- get one up on you. Exactly. Right. You never want yeah. to lose a battle. You mm-hmm. never want to lose a battle. And as much as it's physical, it's mental. It's especially if you're playing the following week, and it's it's yeah, yeah you're sizing your opponent up, right? Yep. You set the tempo, baby. First yep. first play, smack smack the shit out of somebody. <laughs> yeah. And oh, I, I would love that opportunity again. Give oh, you for one series, coach. One series. That's all your, I need. Both your shoulder you know blades what? would I just explode. I, I I did you ever see the there's a the phenomenal play called Damn Yankees. Right. And hey, it, I've never seen it, but yes, I'm familiar okay. with it. It's the story of this longtime Washington Senators fan who sells his soul to the devil to go <laughs> back and be able to play one, one season for, yeah. the, for the Washington Senators. And he, yeah. he's phenomenal. He's a phenomenon. He takes him to the to the playoffs and the devil calls for his soul again. There's a, there's a ball hit to center field and the devil's sitting watching the game. 
and he says, I want, I want, you know, I want you get, now you're going to be that old you man, owe right? Me. You <laughs> yeah. owe me. And all of a sudden he's wrong. It drops it. <laughs> I, and when you said that itch, I thought about it. Oh yeah. Come on. One series. I could hit somebody. One I know series. you. Hey, whether you would hit somebody is never, never going to be the question. He may not be the right guy. Maybe getting there. <laughs> getting there. It might be a little late because we're yeah, little, yeah. be late. Yeah. And you'll be yeah, in your in the new rules, oh. you couldn't play more than about three plays. You'd, you'd be, be out of here. For, you you would have been playing for free every week. Oh you? god, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Come on, I never went for heads. I just no, but I never played, went low. Never you went played low. Play football how football yeah. needed to be played. That's yeah, I, what I expected. Yeah, that you go over the middle, you're going to take a shot. And yeah. certain guys put the fear in you, and certain guys didn't. Yeah. That's yep. the way it is. Yeah, right? I agree. I agree. But I speaking did. of putting the fear in everything and speaking of wrapping this up and, and your time, Coach, thank you so much all yeah. the way from Hawaii. Uh, you've been great to have around in the city. I mean, beyond just the coach. And it, I I'm really have enjoyed our friendship that goes back to the – early 90s, mid 90s, um, you've been what I call a legend in the nah. CFL because of the person you are. Yeah. Nah, I'm just, right? And I mean that in all yeah. respect. Well, hey, I, you know, we love you, Coach. I, I appreciate yes, that, guys. I love you guys, too. And, you know, again, you guys are Hamilton. And, you know, when we go out, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you this, this. I know this for a fact. When those players go out on that field, it's they play for you guys They as much That's as awesome. they play for themselves. That's the, awesome. The legacy well, that you guys have. Given that Let's get a few W's. String up a few W's, and we'll all be enjoying ourselves hey, here safe, at the end of November. Safe travels back to the Hammer whenever you're yes. coming back, and we'll see you. Uh, well, I guess we we'll, might even see you in Montreal. Who knows? Meets you if we get free tickets. We're coming hey, down. Who's flying us out? Who's flying us out? <laughs> we'll find somewhere. Okay, hold on. We're going to say goodbye. Hold on for a second. We got to get you uploaded totally. But for myself, Jeff Reinbold, Rob Hitchcock, David Butt, who is in his parents' basement, this is the Morelli and Hitch podcast. Go, Cats, go. Thanks, fellas. That's another episode of Morialli and Hitch on the Thai Cats Audio Network. Have a question or a comment for them? Email us at mnh at ticats.ca. That's M-A-N-D-H at ticats.ca.